Get out of the car now. Do you have to exit? When can you refuse? When should you refuse? I published a video on this two months ago and you guys chimed in with tons of great feedback. Today, I'm answering your questions. I'm attorney Andrew Flushi, and this channel is about defending your freedom. Be sure to subscribe for a new video every Tuesday. My first video on exiting the car went live on January 25th. We have a great community here and you guys gave me lots of great feedback and comments. First, I was accused of clickbait. Ouch! One viewer said, you never answered the question posed by the title of the video. Fail, clickbait. Guys, that stings. The title was, when you should refuse to exit your vehicle, which by the way is a statement, not a question. But let me make it very clear. You should refuse to exit your vehicle when it's simply a request by the officer and not an order. If it's a request or they're asking you to exit, you can and should refuse. If it's an order to exit the vehicle, unfortunately, you must comply. How do you tell if it's a request versus an order? Devin McManus asked that very question. If an officer asks me to exit the vehicle and I'm not sure whether it's an order or a request, should I ask for clarification? Yes, I'd ask for clarification if you're not sure. Or you can simply refuse the first time, say no thank you. And if it's an order to exit the vehicle, the officer will almost certainly make it very clear that that was an order to exit and not a request. Carl had this to say, I watched the whole video and didn't see the part about when you should refuse. When it's just a request, not an order, that doesn't seem very helpful. Two seconds later, they make it an order. So are there any times when you can refuse an order to exit? Here's an example from an actual client of mine. The officer pulls her over and asks for her driver's license. License and registration, please. She complies, provides her driver's license. The officer then believes that she may be intoxicated. And he asks, Would you mind stepping out to do some quick tests for me to make sure you're okay to drive? The request to exit the car is a compound question, asking her to step out and do field sobriety tests. Field sobriety tests are always optional. The client refuses to step out or to do field sobriety tests. The officer does in fact follow up with an order for her to step out to be placed under arrest for DWI. Now she does have to comply with that order and she does in fact get arrested. However, she has protected herself from providing incriminating information that the officer needs to justify that arrest. So yes, in some cases, the simple request to exit the vehicle may escalate two seconds later to an order to exit the vehicle. However, by simply asserting your rights and denying that initial request, you may very well be protecting yourself from crucial incriminating evidence that the officer needs to prove his case. Other viewers are concerned with the initial stop itself, like Paul's question. Mims talks about when you were lawfully detained. My question is, what if you don't believe you're lawfully detained? If I'm pulled over and the cop either can't or won't tell me what crime slash infraction he or she suspects me of committing, how do I know it's a lawful detainment falling under MIMS? This is a great issue to cover. You should not fight on the side of the road with the officer about whether his detention of you is lawful or not. The officer believes that she has detained you lawfully or else she wouldn't be doing it in the first place and she wouldn't be proceeding with an investigation. She believes that she had a reasonable suspicion or some reason to believe criminal activity is afoot to detain you. You're not going to change the officer's mind on the side of the road by citing legal arguments that the detention was unlawful to begin with. If the officer gives you an order to exit the vehicle, you should simply comply at this point and the officer and the prosecutor will have to prove in court that those actions by the officer were justified under the law. Comply, get through the situation, keep your mouth shut, and then call a great defense attorney. If the officer did not have a valid reason to detain you in the first place, the entire rest of the interaction should be suppressed as a violation of your Fourth Amendment rights. You should walk away free from any charges that followed after that illegal detention. However, the time to argue about that is in court and not on the side of the road. Another viewer, Floyd, wonders about eating Taco Bell. I think you missed the entire point of your video in the Supreme Court ruling Pennsylvania versus Mims. The police can order you out of your car during a traffic stop. But what if it is not a traffic stop? You are sitting in your car parked in front of your home or a friend's home. If you are parked on private property, like the parking lot at Taco Bell, eating your tacos you just bought there and the inside dining area is closed. This issue goes back to the same thing that Paul brought up. The officer must have a lawful detention in the first place in order to order you around and order you to exit the vehicle. 
If you're parked in a parking lot at the Taco Bell eating your burrito supreme and there's no evidence you've done anything illegal and the officer has no reason to believe you've done anything illegal, then she should not have any reason to lawfully detain you. The MIMS issue where the officer can order you out of the car should not come into play. However, the Taco Bell parking lot is not the time where you argue about that. What often happens in parking lots like Floyd mentions is what the, we would call a consensual encounter. The officer walks up to you while you're parked, so they haven't used their blue lights or sirens to get you to stop, and they simply ask you some questions or they ask you to step out of the vehicle. That is what's known as a consensual encounter. If they haven't used their show of police authority to actually detain you in some way, you are free to leave. Now, if you don't ask them, am I free to leave? They're not gonna tell you, hey, you can leave, but do you mind me asking you some questions? They're just gonna start asking you questions. And the law says that's a consensual encounter unless they've used a show of police force to make you believe you're not free to leave. An officer might simply walk up to your car in the Taco Bell parking lot and ask you to exit the car to talk to them. That is simply a request that you should refuse. Truth Warrior says that MIMS case doesn't apply if the one in the car shows no threat. Unfortunately, Truth Warriors, that's not true. MIMS does not require that the police or the prosecutor show that the person they're ordering out of the car actually poses any threat to anyone. Under MIMS, the officer can order you out of the car simply because you might pose a threat without any showing of why they believe that. The police in the United States could have made Mother Teresa exit her car. Folks also wondered about protecting their vehicles when asked to step out of them. Jim asks, if I'm obeying an order to exit my car, can the police prevent me from rolling up the window and locking the door? Jeff asks a similar question. When you're ordered out of the vehicle, are you allowed to lock your doors? Can the police order you out and keep your door open? You can roll up your windows and lock your doors. I see no legal problem with that. But what is it going to accomplish? If the police decide that they have probable cause to search your vehicle, under the vehicle exception to the warrant requirement, they can search that vehicle. They can detain you, take your keys, unlock your car, and search it. If the police decide that they have probable cause to arrest you, or there's an outstanding warrant for your arrest, they can search the area in the car that you could have accessed from the area where you were seated, which basically is the whole car. Maybe rolling up the windows makes sense, so it's not incredibly easy for the police to smell whatever may be in the still in the car. In areas where marijuana is still illegal, this could make sense. However, if you've gotten to the point where you've spoken with the officer at your window and he's ordering you to exit the car and you're complying with that, if there's marijuana in the vehicle or you've smoked marijuana recently, the officer has likely already smelled the smell of marijuana. Locking your doors and rolling up your windows seems like one of those moves that's trying to protect your rights, but I'm really not sure it gets you anywhere. And I believe that it would more likely simply irritate the officers at this stage of the investigation. On a related note, Prickly Pear asks, usually on a standard traffic stop, the driver may advise the officer they don't consent to search or seizures. However, once you open your door, just like at home, doesn't that provide the gateway for officers to search your vehicle without a warrant? No, simply leaving your door open does not equal consent for the officer to search what's inside. That applies to your house and your car. In order to search your car, the officers in general would need probable cause to believe that contraband is inside. Simply opening the door does not give your consent for the police to search, whether it's your house, your car, or your barn. Several viewers brought up the important angle about physical handicaps. Deborah asks, what happens if you're mobility challenged and can't easily get out? This is a rare time when you should probably talk to the police. If you have a mobility issue or handicap where it's extremely difficult or cumbersome to exit the vehicle, you should probably tell the officer about that issue before you attempt to get out. The officer may change their mind and have you remain seated in the vehicle, or they may persist with their order for you to exit the vehicle. Bond, James Bond, asks, what if you had a lower extremity injury and you use a cane? The cane is required to help you, but it could be a weapon. What then? Again, I would tell the officer that you do need to use the cane's assistance to exit the vehicle, whether it's cane or crutches or wheelchair, whatever it may be that you need for mobility. The officer will likely either say disregard the order to exit the vehicle or say that's no problem. And as shocking as it may be to some viewers, I've even seen officers offer to assist a person exiting their vehicle and assist with getting out their wheelchair or crutches or cane. He has some constructive feedback. This dweeb will get you a space in a jail cell. 
Do what cops say, it is better in the long run. I guess he thinks we should all just comply with police requests all of the time. That's certainly one approach. However, that certainly gives the police incriminating evidence to use against you. I know many officers and I talk to them about these things and they frankly will tell you if you ask them that they rely on you cooperating and incriminating yourself in many of their investigations. That approach makes it ridiculously hard for us defense attorneys to actually help you. And if the defense attorney can't help you, you likely will land in a jail cell. Today's video is all about interacting with the police when you're in your vehicle. But what do you do if they show up at your house? Check out this next video to learn how you should respond. I'll see you there. And remember, don't talk to the police.